like to work this problem that involves demand and revenue and in terms of calculus it involves intervals of increasing and decreasing um, okay so we have a company and knows that the demand that's the number of action figures sold for a given price in dollars is given by this function and this is boxed because you see we're considering the domain here to not be the whole real line where this polynomial would be defined but only this closed interval so that it makes sense in terms of a price now we want to first write the revenue as a function of this price and it will be also on this closed interval well if you charge p dollars and there are you know d of p items purchased at p dollars your revenue would just be the product. So this is gonna be P, the number of dollars, times the number of items sold, which if we write it this out for this particular demand function, we get 100, or 10, excuse me, P cubed minus 200 P squared plus 1,000 P, okay? This is our revenue. And we're looking at it only on the closed interval from 0 to 10. The first thing we want to do, if we want to look increasing, decreasing, is we want to find our critical points. This involves the, oh, R prime. This involves the derivative, okay? Because when the derivative is 0 or does not exist, in this interval, we will have a critical point, okay? So we have 30 p squared minus 400 p plus 1,000. Okay, if you notice, if we set this equal to zero, well, first of all, this is defined everywhere. We're not gonna have the D and E. If we set this equal to zero, I can factor out a 10. And then, Maybe you see it, maybe you don't in terms of factoring. So I can do a 3p, the other one must be p. It looks like there's a lot to try here. 10 and 10, 50 and 2, 25 and 4, but this one I think is not gonna be too bad. And now they need to have the same sign. So we now have a positive 100, minus 10 minus 30 gives me a minus 40, and these two multiply here. So this is factored correctly. We then get two solutions to this equation. We get P is equal to, I'll write it here, 10 and 10 over 3. Okay, well, these are not all of our critical numbers. Technically, we would only take the one in the open interval from 0 to 10 um, in terms of solving this, and then we add the endpoints. So if we put our critical points over here, we have the one x value that's in the open interval, and the derivative is 0, and then we always add the endpoints because on a closed interval, we discussed this. The derivative does not exist at the endpoints, but we do consider them critical points for local max, local min, and global max, global min purposes. Okay, these are our critical points. Now, for the open intervals, we don't necessarily need to worry about these two because those are um, the endpoints of our interval, don't come into play so much but we will put 10 thirds, so this is approximately, you know, 3.33. That's thinking about it in terms of dollars. And then we have our, the ends of our interval here. What we need to do to figure out where it's increasing or decreasing, if you may remember, is you can, for instance, pick a point in each interval. So I have an interval, this, would, this interval will correspond to 0 comma 3.33, and this interval would be 3.33 to 10. We pick a point in each one, maybe one being here and five being here, and then you test the derivative because the derivative positive tells you the function is increasing, and when the derivative is negative, we know the function is decreasing. Okay, very good. Well, here is the derivative. I'm gonna use it in its factored form right here. Because, 
it's much easier to evaluate. So maybe let me erase some of this and I will just recopy this derivative here. And then we will get ready to test a point in each derivative. So the derivative factored as 10, 3p minus 10, and then p minus 10. Now I'm ready to test. Okay, here we go. So if we evaluate the derivative at 1, we get 10, we get negative 7, we get negative 9. This is a positive number. We evaluate the derivative at 5, we get 10, we get 5, we get negative 5. This is a negative number. You see, it's much faster to evaluate like this when it's factored. So I would put over these intervals, I would put a plus here and a minus here. And now we're ready to finish the problem because we see the revenue function is increasing on everywhere you see a plus, 0 to 3.33. And it's decreasing on everywhere you see a minus, which is 3.33 to 10, okay? So this would be our answer. I'll put a box around it and then I'll say one more comment. Okay, this did not ask about local max and min or global max and min for that matter, but if it did, for local max and min at least, you know, having a plus and a minus what this says is we are increasing and then we are decreasing. And you sort of look at that picture and you see you would have a local max at x equals 3.33, okay? And then, you know, if you want to think about it, and you should, the global max, what you would do is, well, you have all the critical points. You know, if you were interested, you evaluate the original which is here, revenue, evaluate at 10 thirds, evaluate at zero, evaluate at 10, okay? The y value, and then the highest one would be the global max, and the lowest one would be the global min. We've done some of that in class. But in any case, um, 